Hi guys, welcome back to Jumble Flowers Canada. Guys, I have a need to tell you this, okay? I am doing a couple of videos today, so that's why you'll notice I'll be wearing the same clothes in the next couple of videos. So this is my second video that I'm doing. The first video was about my giveaway. If you haven't seen it, please check that one out. So now guys, I'm going back to doing some little chores that I need to do. So I have a variegated sport, Monstera Deliciosa, and I have it in my greenhouse. It has thrown out two new leaves since I got it, but neither of them are variegated. So I want to go and cut them back and hope that I will encourage a variegated leaf to come again. You know, it's very hard with these plants. It's, sometimes it's just a one-off, it's just a hit and miss, but I would like to try and encourage it to give me another variegated leaf. So I'm going to go out to my greenhouse and I'm going to do that. I'm also going to put in a little bit of footage. Last night I couldn't sleep. I had my beautiful grandson with me and he was absolutely hilarious. He's 10 months old. And when he stays with me, I can't sleep unless I'm sleeping in the same room as him. So I have a crib in one of my spare rooms and I usually sleep in the bed. Well, he's getting too smart now. So at 10 months, he figured out I was in the bed and he was priceless. He, I, I'll never sleep with him again because I disturbed him. But at two o'clock in the morning, he's standing up at his crib and he's coughing and fake laughing. So then I was hyper and then I couldn't sleep. So I said, okay, let's get up. So I got up and I went out to my greenhouse, but it was raining. And I just sat on the step and listened to the rain. It was the most beautiful sound. So I recorded it. Now guys, it's probably corny, but I think I'm going to put a little bit of that footage in. So you get a feel of the ambience in the middle of the night out in my greenhouse. I did plug in my, one of my grow lights. So it did give some light to the, to the greenhouse. And I put the camera up to the, to the roof so that you could hear the rain. And it was just beautiful. So I thought I'd just share a little bit of that with you um, so that you can maybe feel some of the comfort and ambience that I felt last night. Hi guys, it's after 3 a.m. in the morning and I can't sleep. So I came out to my greenhouse and I just wanna show you, first of all, it's just so toasty out here. It is 72 degrees and it's 64% humidity. My humidifier is going. My electricity bill is gonna be through the roof. But I'm gonna stop talking for a moment because it's raining out and I want to see if you guys can hear the rain. I hope you can hear it. Now I know the fan is going. And the humidifier. So, but it's just, oh my God, it's a little bit of heaven. It's December, what is it? It's the week of, week before Christmas, the Saturday before Christmas. So probably the 17th or 18th. I don't even know what date today is. And I don't know how cold it is outside, but look at all these little babies. There's a new leaf coming on my begonia. Can you see there? And there's another new leaf coming on my Epipremnum Panatum variegata new leaves there on my, what is that? Oh yeah, I was going to say Epipremnum, which is not Epipremnum. Elliptica. A new leaf on my Hoya Lisa. A new leaf on my Calathea Orbifolia, which I thought was dead. And another new leaf there. On my uh, another elliptica, another new leaf coming on my pink princess. And there is another bit of growth coming on my tiger tooth ring of fire. I don't know if you can see it. Actually, where is it? I can't see it myself. Oh, yeah, no, there it is. Can you see it? I don't have glasses, so I don't know how clear that is. I'm so glad that didn't die. That's the one I vacuumed. <laughs> and is there anything else? You can see there my truby eye is starting to come back. So the leaves were all wrinkled like this. But now we're getting new leaves. 
And is there any other news out here? Oh, my my cans. Look how well my my cans is coming on. I have tons of cuttings in the basement. I got another new leaf on my ficus tanniki. There. Oh, I know it, but my shadow is in the way. But, and there is another new one coming. So, this was a success pretty well. I just adore this place. I just adore it. Just wanted to share a sleepless night with the crazy plant lady. And what a lovely place to be able to come to. I hope you can hear that. I'm not mad, I promise. Well, I'm kind of mad. But uh, a little bit of madness makes life a little bit more interesting, right? Um, I also have to prepare to do another video for my uh, ha my, Hars, my Mars Hydro grow light. So I'm going to turn on the light and give it like an hour or two before I do the video because um, if you've watched me in the past you'll know that my grow lights actually go on at night time and because I'm in the basement I can trick the plants into thinking day is night and vice versa. So I want to turn it on for about an hour or two because I want to show you guys, I'm going to bring down a humidity meter, I want to show you what the humidity is in there and the heat and it is definitely warmer and it definitely gives a different ambience and a different light. So I'm going to talk about that more in the next video but just to let you know that I will be doing that in the next video. Um, I'm going to potter around, I know I have other little bits and bobs to do so um, I will discover them as I go on my travels. So for now, let's go out to the greenhouse and let's take a look at this Monstera Deliciosa Sport, okay? So guys, here is my Monstera Sport. Do you see the lovely variegation here? And then there's also some speckled variegation here. This is like a little bit like the Thai constellation type of splashing. Um, let me see where else there is variegation. And then there is variegation. This is just ever so slight on this one here. I don't know if you can see. So there's a little bit of variegation there. Can I, actually I'll zoom in and then. So there's a little bit of variegation there. And then there's just a little bit of speckling here. Let me see if there's, okay. So the new leaves don't have any. So this is a new leaf and now what it does have, which I noticed on the main plant, and I'm not sure if it will fade, but can you see, how would you describe it, a mottling almost? So there's like dark veining and light veining on this leaf. And there's actually a little bit of that light veining around here. And I, I did notice it on the other plant, uh, the other part of the plant that I split. And it's making me wonder, it's making me wonder. But anyway, let's, we'll talk about that again in a minute. And then this is the latest leaf. So I'm not seeing any variegation on this either. Now it hasn't fully hardened off yet. Okay, so there's actually two cuttings in here. So this cutting has this leaf and those two have variegation on it, those two leaves. And then the new leaf, this new leaf, is actually coming from the same um, cutting as that. Okay, and I am not really seeing, actually I'm going to go get my glasses, hang on a second. Okay guys, so I actually went and got my glasses and I got a cloth, so I'm just going to wipe down the leaves, give them clean. Now what I notice on this leaf, can you see it got kind of crinkled? And I think that that's where some of the variegation was. If you can actually see there's variegation on the back of that leaf there, but it's not showing on the front. So <laughs> now it's a dilemma. Do I cut these leaves off or do I leave them? Okay, let's clean this and let's inspect it really well to see what I'm working with. Okay. 
So you can see there's a little bit of puckering here. And I'm wondering, could that have been... Look, yes. Can you see, guys? Look. There is a little bit of variegation on the back where it puckered. It just didn't come through to the front. So variegated sports seem to be showing up a lot more uh, than they ever did before, which is fantastic. And I actually bought this at um, Van Bell's in Bowmanville and they had a few that had very slight variegation like this on it and actually I spoke to a lady who bought one and she said there was some white on hers which is like super exciting so okay I know what I'm going to do so the one with the, the stem with the large piece of variegation I'm not going to touch this one here which doesn't have as much and has two leaves that don't appear to have anything at all on them. I'm going to take those two leaves off. You know what, I'm just gonna bite the bullet. I'm going to cut the two of these here. I did it guys, I did it. So, the moment of truth. Let's leave this now and see what will happen. I will report back to you. Um, so, so you can see this one, that it, there's actually a new node coming out there. If this continued to throw out variegation, it would be incredibly exciting. So there we go, guys. There is my Monstera Sport. After all of that, my God, juries have probably made decisions quicker than I made that decision. But we can see there's variegation on the back of that. We established that there is variegation on the back of this new leaf. It just didn't come through to the front. Yeah, we established that. And that's where it kind of puckered here. So I think I have a better chance of getting variegated out of this one. So let's put this back in its little spot because it seems to be very happy. Keep your fingers crossed and let's hope for the best. Okay. Guys, I almost forgot to tell you a story. I almost made the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> you know, some of you are going to say, how dramatic. But anyway, let me tell you the story. I saw these fabulous chairs in HomeSense. Can you see them? Love them. Have been looking for these chairs for a long time. I was looking actually for them on Marketplace, trying to find them secondhand, but of course I couldn't find them. I could find older versions of them that would have required to be stripped and everything. So I'm in HomeSense with my friend Liz and I see them and I'm like, oh my God, I cannot afford them, but they are so beautiful. I want them. So I needed eight, which made it like, like so expensive. And HomeSense never has eight of any chair, right? Anybody who goes shopping in HomeSense will know you get maybe two, four, but you always have to go shopping. They had eight and that's what I need for my dining room because like I've told you all before, there's eight of us now in the family. So I thought, oh my God, what will I do? Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it on my credit card. And then I'm gonna sell my Monstera Deliciosa Thai Constellation. I'm like, I'm devastated, but I'm like, no, you know what? I'm gonna sell it. And I have, you know, the, the original plant. It's not, there's no fenestrations on it, but I'm gonna sell it and that will pay for some of the chairs. So you can see beautiful, big leaf and I'm like oh god I don't want to sell it but I you know stupidly I thought okay I will sell it and I will pay out for some of the plants so I put it up on marketplace and I got an offer straight away so I thought okay so we negotiated the person negotiated and they negotiated it down considerably and I, you know me I'm not great about the prices of the plants so I'm like okay um, I go for it, you know what, it'll pay, at least it'll pay for some of the chairs. And then it toed and froed and then they were like, it was messy. Let me put it that way, it was messy. No, I firmly believe that God played a hand in this. He was telling me, Gronya, don't sell it, don't sell it, you will regret it. <laughs> So I said to the person, you know, I forget about it. The deal is off. I'm not prepared to do any more negotiating on it. It was a fantastic price and no, I'm done. 
and the relief, guys. I'm not kidding you. It was like, oh, I got to keep. I had, would have had major regret, major regret if I had sold this. I mean, come on. How gorgeous. What was I thinking? What chair is worth this? Eight chairs, even if it had paid for eight of the chairs, it wasn't worth it. This beauty is never going anywhere again. If I ever get a notion to sell it again, to pay off something, I am going to kick myself in the butt. This beautiful baby will be staying with me forever more and keep my baby. So I'm getting to keep her. It's going to be a good Christmas. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Sometimes we do stupid things and we don't think it through and I was doing a very stupid thing. So my beautiful baby mwah, is staying with her mama. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you. So now onto other things. Let me see what, oh I know what I have to do. I have to take my Tradescanti and Nanook, which is looking really terrible. I'm not. I'm wondering if Thrips had got to it before I got to treat it, and it's looking pretty sad. So I think I'm just going to cut it up. I will maybe get some cuttings out of it, and I'm actually going to treat it again, just in case, because I heard that they're quite prone to Thrips, and I need to do that. So that will be my next job. Okay. Okay, guys, the Tradescanti Nanook. I had to wash it because oh, I'm going to close the laundry room door. I have laundry on. Mind you, the window's open, you're still going to hear it. But anyway, my Tradescantia Nanook is kind of looking sad in parts. And like I say, I'm actually going to give it a good check now for thrip damage. I had to wash it because my husband sanded down our kitchen table yesterday because he wanted to stain it again. And I'm just checking to see. No, I don't actually think it's thrip damage. I think it might, you know what, sometimes I forget to water it. I think it's probably more of a lack of watering. Clippers. And you can see this here, the root here is, didn't do very well. So I'm just going to see if there's healthy root there. Look, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I'll stick it back in. I won't put that one back in, maybe. I'll stick this one back in. Okay, so let's trim this up so that it looks pretty for the spring. I'm just going to take off some of the um, some of the leaves that don't look so good. There's a piece that fell out that can... Let me cut it back to where there's healthy stem. Okay, so let's clean it up a bit, shall we? Some of these bits. I'm just going to cut off the bits of leaves that don't look great because they will use the energy from those leaves it seems brutal guys but sometimes you just got to clean them up to make them look better and by the springtime hopefully she'll look her best again love this if you want to check out a video I did on this plant I will put a link in the description and I tell you about how you know when it was developed and um, it is a cross between two other Tradescantias which I can't remember the name of now it was only developed actually I'm use my scissors it was only developed in 2012 which is a year f which marks the year I came to Canada um, so we have something we both were in effect reborn on that date because <laughs> it was my new life started my new life here and she is stunning she is so beautiful but you can see mine is not looking that great so I just want to clean her up and I'm going to leave her in the greenhouse now so that she can rehabilitate and hopefully by the spring and she should come back nicely so let's fill in the blank sections. I had to wash the leaves so the soil is a little bit wet but I can propagate again if these don't take off. So I could take this here, stick it in the soil, you know like it's, it's, it's such an easy plant to propagate. So let's just stick these babies back down here and see if we get if we have any luck with them rooting. And now that it's in the greenhouse, it's going to get some beautiful humidity and some beautiful light. Let's stick that in there. Now, I'm not 
you know, there's no guarantees that, that these ones here are going to do well, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. Gronia never throws anything out. I always try. Now, I will come back to this in the spring. I will tidy it all up. I'll cut the, the long pieces and I will start with a compact plant so that I have nice form on it for the summer. But anyway, it's, that's cleaned it up. It looks a little bit better. Okay, okay guys, so this Monstera Deliciosa is the one I took the sport cutting off of. And I've made a right mess. So my husband was sanding down the table and dust got all over it. And then I decided, in my wisdom, that I was going to take off the cocoa core here and I was going to soak it because none of the roots, or the nodes, I should say, have attached themselves to the cocoa core yet. Well, I had to actually cut a piece off. So some of it was resting in dirt and when I pulled it out, it came out with dirt, I put it under the tap and it wouldn't go back on. So dirt went everywhere, even on my new chairs, but I did get it off my new chairs. Um, so, uh, don't do that in your dining room, guys. Well, obviously I didn't wet it in my dining room, I wet it in my laundry room and I brought it back in here. And now my leaves are manky. So I'm going to wash these leaves and also while I'm washing them, I'm going to look out and see if I can see any more variegation. Okay, it's so dirty and dusty. So I did actually clean one leaf, so now I have to do the rest. Okay, back with another bowl. <laughs> and I have um, Castile soap with tea tree oil in here, guys, which I like to use to clean my plants. Okay, they are like absolutely filthy. Look at the dirt on this. Now, I don't know if you can see, you heard me mention about kind of like a mottling on the leaves and I noticed this on a lot of the leaves in um, Van Bell's where I bought this. Some of the plants had a lot of this kind of colouring on the leaf. Now somebody did mention to me that they hope it wasn't the disease mosaic. But I don't think so, because if it was, it would have spread to the other leaves. And I will zoom in so you can see it, but there's like a lovely mottling on some of the leaves. Now, some of the plants at Van Bell had it on even more leaves, but I took this one because of the variegation. But it's actually very pretty. And I don't think it's, um, it's mosaic, that mosaic disease, or not mosaic, but the mosaic disease. Now oh, see, look, there's another one with some variegation. And it's actually on the stem too. I didn't see that one the first time around. So let's keep an eye on that. Where's that stem? It's just a small stem here. So, you know what, let's keep an eye on that one too. And see, do we get any variegation on it? I'm not going to take it out now but I will keep an eye on it. I still love the Monstera Deliciosa, even the green one. There, it's just such a pretty plant. And which, you know, it's so easy to find now. Of course, if you're in a very small space and you can't fit it, I understand, but it is such a pretty plant. And so readily available now. Two years ago, about well, two, two and a half years ago, you couldn't find this plant. I mean, it was so rare and it was expensive. Not as expensive as they are nowadays, but expensive by comparison to what they are now. And here we are. Common day plant. Just like the Birkin is now available in Lowe's, who would have thought? I just imported some from Thailand. <coughs> and paid more than they're selling for in Lowe's now. But that's the look at the draw, guys. That's going to happen with all plants, rest assured. It's, it'll it's going to happen with everything someday. And there'll always be something to replace it, right? But the funny thing is, it could be something that's common now, could become rare, and could be expensive in a couple of years' time. That's the look of the draw, right? We never know what's going on. Like um, Pink Princess. You could get them in Valley View Nurseries like two and a half years ago for $10. And now 
you're paying like $150 probably for it. So it is the look of the draw if you happened to get it. Now even then, to get it in value for $10 was cheap. Like it was more expensive everywhere else. But they propagated them and then there's all sorts of talk that oh it's not stable. But I, my one that I have out there, that the cat, that the kittens kept pulling out, was actually um, from there, and it's you know it's still giving. Now it's not giving me massive amounts of pink, but it's still giving me pink, and it's been in and out of that pot. I don't know how the plant is still alive. So maybe they weren't all stable, but I think they're pretty. And listen, I'll take it. I'm happy to have it. At the price, and I, you know, ten dollars. <laughs> okay, so that's every leaf there, guys. I just there was one leaf I could see a little bit of variegation on, so I'll keep an eye out on that. Um, I think this one was actually damaged when I bought it, so I'm just going to leave it there because I take them off if they're not fully dead, and. I'm just going to try and encourage this to, to uh, climb. Now, I'm not fully convinced that cocoa car poles are good. I did make this one, and uh, but I'm not fully convinced that they are worth it. I think I will start making some more moss poles, but for now it's here, it's in this pot. And I probably could have cut another branch. The thing you got to be careful of though when you do catch these plants in here is that you don't catch a new leaf, which is actually what I did on the last one. The leaf got cut and uh, it distorted the leaf. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up and if you could please subscribe. Now remember guys, if you subscribe you will be part of the draw which I, for the plant I'll be giving away in the spring. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out on my channel. So guys, have a wonderful day, weekend. I know it's busy for us all, preparing for Christmas, and um, I will have to do the Mars Grow Light video tomorrow because I'm just too tired to go and do that now. So guys, take care, and if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up in the comments to let me know you watched till the end, that would be amazing. Take care.